While you guys were out in the field, I was meeting with Giorgio Tsoukalos. He showed me a replica of an artifact of a flying triangle. These carvings were found in caves. They were found throughout South America. And this is basically, what, a thousand years old, 1,500 years old. Legend has it that these types of craft were flown by ancient astronauts. We don't know where they came from. We don't know who they are. We don't know if they're from the future, they're from another planet. We just don't know. You're telling me that 1,500 years ago, there were aircraft in the sky flying around, and people were making models of them and drawing them, making little trinkets just like this? Indigenous peoples on planet Earth were visited by ancient astronauts flying craft just like this, triangular-shaped craft, visiting planet Earth and seeding the culture with information. A possibility? It could also be a time ship. Oh. Bill says that these ancient astronauts are actually time ships from the future. I mean, come on, time traveling, it, it just doesn't exist. At least not today. This is just science fiction. Flying triangles from the future, from our future, going back in time. They see them, they're seeding the past, and they did something, maybe something religious, maybe something cultish, we don't know. Time traveling, we're talking about time traveling here. Some sort of vehicle traveling from the future into the past. That's it? Is there any kind of proof behind this or is this simply a theory? I'm telling you that 20 years ago, an army officer traveled into the future. We have that totally documented. Is there proof that these ships are coming back from the future? No. I have to say, this is why I love Bill. He doesn't hold back. A hundred years ago, people laughed at the idea that we would be able to fly in airplanes. People laughed at Charles Darwin for uh, proposing the theory of evolution. So, uh, you know, when Bill Burns proposes the theory of time travel, uh, I don't think I can laugh it off. Regardless what inspired the design of this trinket, it is a triangle, and it does look like it might be aerodynamic. I propose that we make a model identical to this right here, out of styrofoam or something like that. Just throw it in the air like a glider. See if it flies. You got it. Sounds good. We were at the lab of special effects supervisor Brick Price in Los Angeles, California, who has made an exact scale model of Giorgio's artifact. If this model flies, we can have our final piece of proof that alien visitation has been going on for thousands of years. All right, launch away. Let's see this thing fly. Okay. <laughs> if the model actually flies, then we really have to reconsider what we believe about uh, ancient civilizations and what they knew. And it's possible that uh, they had knowledge of aerodynamics, of, of flying machines, and, and maybe, um, you know, maybe extraterrestrial craft. Oh, oh look at yes. that. That's <laughs> that fantastic. Uh, that okay. flew. It's starting to lift. It's starting to lift. That's good. That and, flew um, a lot better than I wanted it to. <laughs> I'm sorry, Kevin. Sorry. Wow. This model flew and did a lot better than I ever expected. And I kind of have a conflict. I wasn't sure that this was actually modeled after a real aircraft. Now, I don't know what to think. The relic flies. Not only does it fly, the inherent aerodynamic qualities of this are so intense that it stalls, rights itself, and settles down. We're looking at proof of ancient flying triangles. This design is made to form that angle of attack just like the way the space shuttle comes down exactly. for its landing. Exactly right. I also think it's interesting that it didn't dive at all. No. It didn't it's dive, exactly it didn't right. flip. It didn't go up it in the air and come back down on its tail. When we saw this thing in flight, its tail dropped, its nose went up, and it settled down to gather the lift. Quite frankly, this mimics the space shuttle's design. But you ask yourself, how could the indigenous peoples living in Colombia 1,500 years ago have conceived of a device like this, a gliding device? There's one answer, which is implausible, but more plausible than anything else. Time travel. You've got to be impressed of the aerodynamics of this design. No, I can't deny it. And if that is the exact replica of what Giorgio gave us the other day, that tells you a lot about what they saw. Something from outer space? Possible. I, there's nothing that points to that, in my opinion. 
I'm leaning towards that these ancient artifacts, these little trinkets, are modeled after some sort of highly advanced aerodynamic toy. And that's all this is. What's with Kevin Cook? I mean, he's watching this thing fly, and even as it's landing perfectly, he's doubting the significance of what we've shown. What is he saying? Doesn't show anything. Doesn't show there were ancient astronauts. Doesn't show flying triangles were flying over South America 2,000 years ago. Doesn't show anything. Hello. I wish Bill would take the time to think about what this test actually proves. It has nothing to do with airships in the sky from the future, from another planet. All it says is that there was an understanding way back when of aerodynamics, and that's special enough in itself. Well, I'll tell you what this means to me. It means that somehow long ago, uh, some ancient peoples came up with a design that's perfectly aerodynamic. How they came up with that idea, I, I really can't say. And I, I, there's no way we can conclude that. But it opens up possibilities. Were those people seeing the same triangular craft that we're seeing today? Well, now we have to be open to that possibility. So guys, what do you think about some of these cases that we've been hearing? I would say both of them are baffling. Gordon Scott, to me, obviously kind of seems like a military aircraft. Just flying low, F-16 guiding it. There's a lot of things that point to that. What if it's some kind of cooperative hybrid craft that we're developing with ET? Actually working with extraterrestrials to build these flying triangles. Actually working with extraterrestrial technology. Not with extraterrestrials on board, but with their technology. Kind of Area 51 reverse engineering. What if we've been doing that for years? Well, Bill has a theory that uh, aliens and humans are, are collaborating on, on creating this reverse engineered technology. I think we have to be careful about how far we want to go with these, these theories that uh, aliens are, are working with us secretly. Until I can find some kind of definite proof, I'm afraid Bill's alone on this one. I mean, we're just trying to figure out if these are military or extraterrestrial. I, I, I think that going all the way to hybrid already is, is, uh, is kind of jumping the gun a little bit, don't you think? Why? It's been going on since World War II. I need something to hold on to. Where is the evidence? I mean, it's great in theory. It could be. It could be the case. These could all be extraterrestrial, but I don't have the, the proof that I need to prove that, other than their weird flight characteristics. I just think we have to keep our, our speculation in check. I mean, we really don't have proof that there are alien craft that we are reverse engineering. The proof is what Gordon Scott saw. He saw something that, given your description, of what people have been talking about behave like nothing we've ever developed. It's what do you not, need? It's not what so far out that it, it is conceivable that we could actually have these kinds of crap. I wouldn't be surprised to find out we do have this technology, the type of thing that Gordon Scott saw today.